Hey, welcome to the podcast. Super excited to have my guest today, Pam Jacobson. Pam, thanks for joining me. So for the people that don't know Pam, uh, she is the owner of the Healing Sanctuary and spends a lot of her time uh, helping all of us here at Ferry International and all of our clients on basically creating better health routines, uh, more health and vitality, better sleep, less stress, all the things that matter. So uh, if you're one of my busy, crazy, high-performing listeners, this show, just like my interview with Dr. Daniel Amen or Jim Quick, is exactly for you. Uh, it is a new year. It is a new decade, Pam. And yes, what do we know? Is. Like people get all, you know, like weirded out around the holidays. You know, they say the average person puts on 10 pounds. Yes. Right. Exactly. From like yeah. Canadian Thanksgiving, October, <laughs> all the way through. We start until, celebrating yeah, early. <laughs> exactly. All the way through till New Year's. And then inevitably, what does everybody do? They're like, okay, I want to lose weight. I want to get in better health and vitality. I want to get in better shape. Um, and we know by January 17th, the gyms are no longer full, Fun. right? Just the normal people are still there, but everybody else is gone. Back on the couch in the robe. Exactly. <laughs> so so today for for my friend that's listening, what I really want you to do is I want you to hear this, this woman's incredible story. And then we're going to talk about some of the disciplines that you can take on to kind of break through this very noisy space called health and vitality. So, so Pam, first of all, um, share with the people that have never met you before a little bit about your backstory. Because if they're watching this right now, they're like, all right, I already don't like her. Look, she looks like she's thin. She's in good shape, right? Like, have you always been like this? Like, give them a little backstory so they understand who you are. Okay. Well, the reality is I have not always been like this. And the reality today is that I do walk my talk. So it was yeah. a long journey. Um, I've always been in healthcare. So mm -hmm. I will qualify that. Even from the time I was little, I knew that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. And it, But it really wasn't until I you know, went to college, became a nurse. My focus was oncology, mm -hmm. which is the the care of cancer patients, which is just a super stressful job to have anyway, yeah. which nobody told me. Did you actually say that you wanted to do that? I knew I wanted to be in healthcare. Yeah. And uh, it, the easiest and quickest route for me was to go to school and uh, do nursing school. Okay. Uh, when I first got out, I didn't really know exactly which specialty I wanted to be in. So mm -hmm. over a span of about five or six years, I did women's health and cardiology and gastro and sure. lots of different professions, but ended up in oncology. And that actually was my passion. Yeah. I, I loved the, um, just the whole idea of being able to help people that were struggling with cancer diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And, but what I didn't realize at the time I was in my late twenties. So mm -hmm. what I didn't realize at the time was just how emotionally taxing and stressful that would be obviously for the patient involved sure. but for the whole family yes. and then for the the really the caregivers i mean it was it was extremely stressful so in that several year period that i was very much engaged in that profession on uh, my own health just kind of took a nosedive and i was overweight by about 50 pounds i was um not doing well from a health perspective and my immune system crashed and i uh, was out hiking one day with my kids and got exposed to poison oak and developed a massive internal um, infection. And it just rocked my world, took me down. I wasn't able to work. And it was through the recovery from that process that I began to recognize that this profession that I had kind of married myself to didn't have the answers really to help me, right? I had tried everything Western medicine to get better and was failing and was really in danger of some pretty significant um, downside and potentially amputation of my leg that was very infected. So it was actually a girlfriend of mine that said, Pam, why don't you go to the local health food store? And I was like, what's that? I'd never been there and didn't even know we had one. Yeah. So now, where were you born and raised? And I where was, were you at this time? So I was um, I was living in California, but I was, I was born in Montana, but for a very short time. And then I grew up in Ohio. Yeah. And very much in the, you know, Midwest, you know, yeah. meat and potatoes. Blue collar, I was always a good people. chubby kid yeah. my whole life and mm -hmm. had no clue about health, right? Yeah. No clue. And didn't wasn't raised with exercise or understanding like most of us, right? Yeah. It, hey, milk it does the body good. Yeah, and eat the standard American diet and you'll be yeah. fine. <laughs> and at the time, you know, my dad was in the military, so my mom was kind of a single mom. He was sure. gone all the time. So it was, you know, it was uh uh TV dinners and yeah. fast food. That's when fast food was starting yes. to become really popular. So 
I didn't have any background in how to take care of myself because, you know, we don't learn it in our community. We don't learn it from our family. Where are we going to learn it? You don't teach. They don't teach us in school. Dan- Daniel Amon said, you go to church and they feed you donuts, ice cream, bacon. He's right. like, they're trying to send you to God. Right, right. right. Like, exactly. That was actually, he said that right. on my podcast. And then you go to school and they give you oh. pizza and soy burgers and yeah. all kinds of crazy they stuff. They weren't giving right? you so. soy burgers in Ohio. Yeah. <laughs> now, I don't nowadays. know what it was sure. made out of, but... Um, anyway, so my, my so you had this tragedy. Yeah, it was it was it was just really. I mean, it it stopped me in my tracks and made me begin to recognize that I was not going to find the answers I was looking for in the profession that I was in. Sure. And um, so it was this health food store foray that kind of sent me down a different path. The the guy there in the vitamin department said, you know, let me give you a business card for a local naturopathic physician. So sure. a, a doctor, well-trained, that's practicing more functional medicine, restoring yes. function, because that's what had happened. I didn't have a disease. I had lost function. Yes. And that was because I had such a crappy lifestyle. I ate poorly. I was overweight. I didn't ex- I didn't even know about exercise. or. And here I'd been oh, in and, and medicine and for years. But the stress of dealing mm-hmm. with cancer, I don't, I don't think anybody... I mean, like having, having, you know, I went through it, my wife went through it, you know, going in and seeing, you know, the people that are standing there by your side as you're doing chemo for three or four hours. And to think that they do that all day long, 250 days a year, watching patients come and go and and literally come and go. Right. Right. Like, I'm just trying to think of the emotional toll of that. It's right? huge. It's huge. And, and it's, it's the, the, the patient, which you as the caregiver bond with, but it was also the families yes. that were involved. And it was, it was you know, several years. I, I don't know that anyone in that field makes it for very many years before they notice the toll on themselves. Yeah. And it was actually the head oncologist of the group that I worked with. He just came to me and said, Pam, I think it's maybe time for you to make a career shift. Wow. And at that point, I knew that um, I, I had I had kind of cleaned up my act a little bit mm-hmm. and I was following the advice of this naturopath and I was getting healthier. And I started to recognize that there was this other path I intended to go down. Mm-hmm. And I was already studying and looking into. And so that was kind of the trajectory that happened for me is I left Western medicine and very aggressively pursued um, a combination of things, Eastern medicine. So I have my, my master's degree and license in the full, you know, uh, practice of Chinese medicine, if you will, mm-hmm. so the Eastern philosophies. Yep. And then I continued for the last 15 years in studying functional medicine, which is kind of what my naturopathic physician had helped me with, and am now board certified in functional medicine. So I basically cover now with my client base, because now I have a private practice, uh, that whole gamut of how do we take someone back to optimal health, restore optimal health, um, to prevent the development of disease, things like cancers and diabetes Mm -hmm. and um, so many of the Alzheimer's, so many of the things that we see plaguing and getting worse, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, as we're aging, especially this baby boom population. Um, And so that's what I what I'm focused on now. And that's I love it. So I would love for the listener right now to think about if you have uh, aging parents or you have uh, and and I, I hate to even say this, anyone that you love in your family that isn't healthy. Uh, anybody you love around you that has chronic illness, like this is really for you. I mm-hmm. mean, there's no doubt. A lot of people listening right now, Pam, are like myself, right? I came to you like, okay, I just get myself fired up every single day, but I knew when I did my blood work, my adrenals were completely right. shot. And I would right. finish a seminar, redo my blood, and the person who was doing my blood would say, did you just come back from war? Like <laughs> your, your body is completely destroyed. And right. yet all I was doing was doing what I do, which is a seminar. Right. Right. We're going to get into all of that. I want you, though, for all my friends that are listening to be listening through the, through the sort of the point of reference of. This is such a noisy space, mm-hmm. right? I remember getting a cassette in like the early 90s called Dead Doctors Don't Lie. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yes, yes. And then you look today like Dr. Oz, Oprah, keto diet, intermittent fasting, uh, the old Atkins diet, and then he died of his own diet. Like there's just, right. there's, <laughs> it's a trillion dollar industry. You can find anything you want online to rationalize your behavior. Right. Five glasses of wine diet, the all chocolate diet. Joe Rogan, I just listened to a podcast. He's literally having only meat i mean no fruits wow. no vegetables no carbs only meat and like i saw the podcast two weeks in he said i have a ton of energy i feel great but i think i'm gonna die right i don't poop right, right? or something yeah. right it, the the whole point is 
for the average person out there, myself included, it's so confusing. Yeah. So, so I'm actually, I, I want to start with, ready? Gut health, blood, and stress responders. Mm -hmm. Right, AKA blood test, poop test, and spit test. Right. So this is about to get a little graphic for some of you out there, but Pam, just explain. Okay. Just why does it matter? And then we're gonna go again, gut, blood, stress, all the above. Right. Well, it does matter. And, it, and I wanna say that it matters for everyone, yeah. not just somebody who's already sick. In fact, I would say it's even more important for those of you who you know, just maybe don't quite have the energy that you're looking for, or don't quite have the vitality, yeah. maybe that you did when you were 20 or 25. Or you feel like you're aging faster than yes. you, you should be. Yes, this is even more critical because, again, we want to get on the the front edge of any kind of a disease process, right? Yeah. Once Alzheimer's is set in, and we've got it, it's hard to dial back from yeah. some of those things. So, um, in my, in, not only just in my practice, just in when we look at the the scientific world of functional medicine, right? This is just not somebody's ideas that sprung yeah. up. I mean, this yeah. is all based in science. And it's where medicine's going, by the way. In the next decade, it will be functional medicine first, right? Everyone should go back and listen to my interview I did with Dr. Peter Diamandis, yes. who was talking about we're all going to live to be 150 years old because the body can do it and the brain can do it, just not the way you're treating your body and your brain. Right. And, and if he was you, talking functional medicine. Yes. And if you're going to live to be 150, there's something, there's, there is lifespan, which is the length of time you live, but then there's something called health span, which is how healthy are you going to be? Because if I'm yeah. going to live to 150, I want to feel amazing getting yes. there. So in, and, and the, many people who, who consult with me, that's what they're looking for is what, how can I set myself up? How can I optimize mm -hmm. my lifestyle to, uh, get me there in terms of health span and yep. longevity. And, you know, for those that already have some kind of a process, how can I dial that back or completely eliminate yep. my condition? And, you know, there's three really key, I call them evident evidentiary areas, right? It gives us information to help make change. Most yep. of us are not going to change no. unless we've got a very clear reason to do that. And so, I work to give my clients a very clear reason on paper. It wasn't my idea. Mm -hmm. It is what we found. And we do three things. We do blood tests, which really look at just overall kind of chemistry. We mm -hmm. can look at the immune system there. We can look hormone at levels. hormone levels. We can look at how well you manage your blood sugar, which most of us are really yeah. bad at. Yeah. We can look What's at your- it, It's borderline. What's the thing when you have too much sugar in your system? Um, well, hyperglycemia or yeah. insulin resistance, yeah. it's its really pre-diabetes. Pre-diabetes. I was just I was listening to a podcast on my way here, actually, mm -hmm. and 50% of the world's population, 50% mm -hmm. is either type 2 diabetic or pre-diabetic. 50%. That's insane. Yeah. But that's so, the world's population, 7.5 billion people. But yeah. I, would argue, I would love to know the U.S., North America, Canada, European. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see. Yeah. We're, okay. we're definitely in that 50%, no question. So, so. I do my blood work, what do I learn? You learn how well you manage blood sugar. You learn how balanced your hormones are. All these things are critical yep. for this health optimization yeah. baseline that yeah. we're creating. You learn about your cardiovascular disease risk, and that's on a continuum, right? Most yeah. people think, oh, well, I'm only 35 or 40, so I don't have to worry about cardiovascular disease. Mm -hmm. uh, no, it started maybe 20 years ago. Yeah. Teenagers, young adults, that's where we start looking, right? Because mm -hmm. you can see it already. Yep. And we can also see if there's a genetic underpinning. Um, and then we can see changes in... Okay, hold on. Genetic underpinning. Uh, see, people are always looking for a... Well, so you don't understand, Pam, my family has always been like this, right? Like we make it... In, and look, sometimes there's genetics, I get it. And sometimes there's just a story we right. keep telling ourselves. Right. It, it's a what does that mean, genetic underpinning? Right. It, it's a convenient story. It's an yeah. easy out, a good excuse. Yeah. Here's what I'll say about genetics. Genetics loads the gun. Mm-hmm. What you do every day in your lifestyle pulls the trigger. So you can have a genetic That's a pre in case we're all disposition <laughs> yes. for diabetes. Yes. Meaning that there's a, a number of genes that don't help you regulate yeah. sugar as well. Yeah. But that will never manifest if you manage your blood sugar, mm -hmm. right? So you pull the trigger on those genetics when you eat a crappy diet, get stressed, don't rest, and then you have diabetes. So there are really basically almost no real diseases that, at least the common ones that we see, yep. that are genetic, Yeah. right? So they're just aren't, and that includes cancers and everything. So- um, So with the blood, mm -hmm. where should they go? Well, they can go to their primary care physician. Mm -hmm. uh, what I find- What do they ask for though? 
they should ask for because we can look at I just. Know that. In, I'm just trying. I want to get it as in basic a lot of the conventional. Possible, yeah. You know, in a lot of the conventional medicine world, we can look at all of these things. We yeah. want to look at your lipid panel. That's things like cholesterol, triglycerides. Yeah. We want to look at your hormones, all of them, thyroid, mm -hmm. insulin. We want mm -hmm. to look at your sex hormones, testosterone. Mm -hmm. For men and women, testosterone is critical. Yes. But not just total testosterone. It doesn't tell us much. We need yeah. to see free testosterone. Yeah. We need to see free T3 in the thyroid. Yeah. So all of the hormones. And that includes adrenal, which yes. takes us to the spit test. Yes. Looking at cortisol, looking at DHEA. Um, so you can get, so by the way, just so, so someone that maybe is listening to this and they have no idea what a spit test is. They're like, I know how to spit. Like, what do you, what, what, what is this? Like explain what it is. It's when we're looking at your adrenal glands are what produce all of your stress hormones. Mm -hmm. One of those hormones is called cortisol, yeah. but it, they also produce some other really important hormones like DHEA, which mm -hmm. is the precursor to all your sex hormones. Um, and it's important to look at that because it gives us a, a kind of a, a timeline and a chronicity of looking at a person's ongoing stress response, which basically tears down the function of the body. Yeah. So it's much better to look at that in a saliva or spit test mm -hmm. because we're looking at adrenal function. Mm -hmm. You can look at some of those things in the blood, but those are assays created for adrenal disease, a very yes. different situation. So... In a functional practice, we're going to be looking at your spit, we're going to look at your poop, we're going to look at your blood. Mm -hmm. The question was, where could I get the blood done? Mm -hmm. You know, I would say that you're going to be better off working with a practitioner like myself, a functional medicine doctor or naturopathic physician that would order a comprehensive workup. But that's not to say that many of the tests can't be done in a at your conventional doctor's office, especially yes. if you have a good relationship yes. um, and you can ask them to run those. And insurance does pay for a lot of it. Yes. So. Um, so blood tells us a lot. Spit tells us a ton for high performers. Mm -hmm. The spit tells us a ton because you it, like a anyone listening right now or watching, you've had this where you're like, where I was mentioning for me, run, 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 run as fast as I can. Go, 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 go. Kill, 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 kill. Win, 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 win. Oh, completely annihilated afterwards. Right. You don't have to be like that. Yeah. Like I just recognized that I needed to regulate all of my cortisone levels. Right. right? And or adrenals, excuse me, was the big thing for me. And once I did that, I found that I could run, 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 win, 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 kill, kill, kill a lot longer. And not die, die, die not afterwards. Die, die, die <laughs> afterwards, like finish yeah. the seminar, then like the next day, go have fun with my kids or be with my wife or go for a run or like do whatever. It just, it, it wasn't like win, crash. Right, like, right. Super important. I think once you have the information, yeah. it, it really allows you to uh, understand how to create balance, right? Yes. How could you slip some things in when you're doing a seminar in between to mitigate that original mm -hmm. cortisol response from a busy day the day before. So it it is, again, it's evidence, information that we provide to the client that allows them to understand, here's the things I could do to maintain balance rather than the big, you know, the big climb up and then the yeah. crash after, right? Which eventually tears the body apart, right? The human body is, it's, is meant to be homeostatic, right? In balance. Mm -hmm. And it's always seeking balance. And it will drive you to crave sugar, for instance, yep. if you are low in, in glucose. But when it's, once it gets dysregulated, it can send you false messages. So really, really important to learn how to create a baseline that helps you balance and learn how to do that in a, a kind of on a daily lifestyle. So let's transition and talk about poop. poop. Okay. We, get, we keep saying the poop diet. Right. Now, by the way, for those of you that are listening or watching, I just want to stress to you again, like this is a part, like, you know what fascinates me? Like, I'll ask people, they're like, oh, I'm just, I'm really unhealthy and I want to, you know, I want to lose weight. And I'll just say, how many times a day do you poop? Which is a really fun question when you like just met somebody, right? right? Cause they're like, <laughs> what? And I say, well, is it once a week? Is it once a day? Is it twice a week? And they go, oh my God, it's like, you know, like maybe like once a week. And I just think to myself, you're full of blank, right? And then I'll say, well, how many meals do you have per day? Well, I have three. And I'm like, so how many times do you think you should be going to the bathroom per day? And people have like X's on their eyes. Like, how is that not common sense? Right, right. I'm sorry. We're talking gut health, ladies and gentlemen. Right. Poop test. And it's, it's super us. important. It's, it's yes. super important. And it's, it's amazing. Again, another one of those things we learn nothing about, right? The poop is, you don't talk about poop. Oh, right? no. And most people aren't raised in a family where poop ever comes up. Yes. My wife is right here. We talk about poop all the time. <laughs> So and funny. you know when I was when I was starting my my new career path into yes. functional medicine and I started in Chinese medicine the Chinese are all about the poop right yes was, wanted to know everything about it we had to know all of the details mm -hmm. in in functional medicine you know there's so much we can tell yeah. in the poop because if you think about it it's the downstream mm -hmm. effect of all of the digestive process so yep. 
um, most of you are familiar with things like colonoscopies yep. and, and endoscopies. That's looking at the mechanical function. Do mm -hmm. I have a tumor? Or do I yes. have, you know, some kind of a pocket or a polyp or something like that? But you can't look in the colon uh, or the digestive system and tell whether or not you have enough of the right kinds of enzymes or the mm -hmm. right kinds of bacteria. Yep. And for those of you out there who are paying any kind of attention, this bacteria, the good bacteria, the microbiome, we call it, is mm -hmm. critical. Yes. Uh, we know now that about 37 pounds of you is that bacteria that you're carrying around, mm -hmm. and it makes all the decisions all day long for everything that's going to happen mm -hmm. in your body. So we can tell a lot from the poop by, uh, you know, looking um, at these different areas that we can't see in some of the mechanical tests that we can get done in a conventional, you know, medical office. So I can say that a poop test, super critical in my office. Mm -hmm. Everybody gets one. Yep. Uh, it's about a three-day process, and it will look at everything from how just, well Just to you... clear, it's not a three-day process of pooping. Just it's... Well, it takes three days to collect, so it is a three... <laughs> yeah, you collect over three days. You collect over three days. And then you send it in, yeah. and just that is, is interesting conversation with yeah. your spouse. And it's interesting how many of my patients will say, but I don't... I, you mean it's consecutive days? Yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah. It's like, well, I only poop every three days or maybe yeah. once a week. Or, yeah. And again, no former knowledge that it was yeah. important. So, yeah. you know, I mean, the minimum is once a day. Mm -hmm. And for those that are really optimized, you, watch your dog, folks. They poop after every meal, right? Bingo. Humans should do the same yes. thing. Yes, yes. Um, but it takes some optimization to get that to happen. So we're able to look at the stool and tell... Uh, whether or not you digest the food you ate, whether you're absorbing all the nutrients mm -hmm. that you need to absorb, whether you have any inflammation in there, whether there's parasites or bacteria or fungus, or it's a lot of information. If any we of could those- tell, We could talk parasite stories that, uh, yeah. And people are like, oh, but I've never traveled out of the country. You think, people think you have to go like to India or someplace no, like, to get a parasite. You no, ever had a you hamburger? just went down to in and out <laughs> yeah, You've got a parasite, yeah. guys. You ever had sushi? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> have you ever had food? Yeah. There's parasites. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. So- um, so it's important to to look at that digestive function because mm -hmm. here's the deal. The digestive system is where you intake mm -hmm. all of the nutrients that are going to fuel all of the processes of the yes. body. So if you aren't, um, you know, all of us seem to be eating plenty when mm -hmm. you look at our population. So mm -hmm. it's not that we're not eating nutrients, but we're not absorbing them. Yeah. So we are malnourished in a sense, even though we may not look like that on the outside. Mm -hmm. well, and you can be grossly obese. And be malnourished. Yeah, actually, yeah. Men, most would be. Right? Yeah. Most of most obese people are, and so the digestive system is really where it starts. It is the the key beginning in a functional medicine environment is to look at the function of one of the most important systems, and it has a direct line to the brain, right? So you hear this gut brain mm -hmm. interaction. They, um, you know, there's many out there now that are saying that the gut is actually the first brain and it's where all that microbiome is yep. stored. And if we don't keep that bacteria healthy, it is, doesn't matter what's going mm -hmm. on up here. So a poop test is super important. And I have all of my clients do it because once you see that on paper, there's, there's no going back from that, right? Mm -hmm. You are, you have to change that. Mm -hmm. When you optimize the gut, you now have made a major difference in the function of the whole body just yep. in that one space. So yes. super important. But ag again, I think what was cool about working with you in the very beginning, and obviously we have an ongoing, you know, incredible relationship. I knew to do my blood back from like Tony Robbins mm -hmm. in like the early 90s, like right. uh, Stu Middleman and his wife, right? were like doing blood work in the back of the room. And I right. was like, oh, I'm going to go check that out, right? And they would show us our blood like in real time under yes. a microscope. Dark was, field microscope, Right, yeah. it was crazy. And then Peter Diamandis and others, but like you're the first person that said, no, you really need to check all three. Right. And I knew it was like, I knew, the, I think the thing that freaks people out is there's so much noise and so much confusion and so much sort of like, this is the way, right? but not enough people saying, you need to check out your body first mm -hmm. and then make some good decisions. Right. Is that fair? Absolutely. Right. Because it's easy to say, here's a diet. Right. And here's the, a program. And the reason why, you know, there's it's, all of that exists is because we're all different yeah. at the baseline. Yep. So if we're all different, what ends up happening is you get a bunch of different stuff flying around yeah. out there, but is it the right thing for you? Yeah. This is called personalized approach to medicine yes. or personalized approach to health. Um, and you're not going to know what is going to work best for you until you know what's not working. Yeah. And so that's where, again, I think building, I, I talk to my clients about building a health optimization plan. Mm -hmm. Well, it starts with understanding what's not optimized already, yeah. right? Where is the function yeah. already? Yeah. 
a problem and where is your lifestyle contributing to that, yeah. right? So that's kind of where we start. And the labs honestly aren't something I need to necessarily see because I can tell after all the years I've been doing this just mm -hmm. by talking to you what I would need to do. It's yeah. evidence for you, Yes. right? Because if that's I can't- a, That's give, an interesting distinction. Yeah, if I can't give yeah. you a reason to have a strong enough why to yeah. go on and make the changes I'm gonna ask you to make, we're not gonna be successful. So the labs are really the evidence that we're gathering. Mm -hmm. And it does, it tightens up my suggestions about supplements that you might take or different yeah. kinds of treatments you might need. But the evidence is there for you to kind of fuel your why that you're gonna go on to carry out the plan. <clears throat> so, so even though I say uh, it's a very confusing space, even before blood and, and poop and spit, you said, hey, look, there's like five core things that like, obviously each one's gonna be customized based upon the results, right. but like there's five core things you have to do. Right. <clears throat> I think it'd be really good right now for the listener just to say, hey, no matter what, right? Here's five core things. Mm -hmm. By doing though, the blood, the poop and the spit, you can really optimize it and more customize it. Is right. that, is that exactly. the right way to describe it? Exactly, So yes. talk to us about those five most important actions. Okay. Um, you know, it, it's not going to be what people think, right? Because yeah. everybody's expecting me to say diet Eat less, is number work, one. Yeah, work out more. Exercise is number yeah, two. No. There's five things. <laughs> number one is sleep, guys. Sleep. Yeah. And if you're not if you're not getting enough, and, and more importantly, you're not getting the right quality, mm -hmm. deep enough sleep, yeah. it's when the body repairs itself. So if we're not optimizing sleep, we're not repairing. It would yeah. be like it would be like a drive-through auto mechanic, right? Mm -hmm. You pull in and you say, you got one minute to fix everything. And yeah. they're not gonna be able to do that. Same thing, if you get into bed and you don't sleep deeply, your body will not repair. Okay, I'm literally pulling up my sleep cycle app, which I swear by, and if you have not checked this out, I strongly recommend it. Uh, last night, I had a 72% effective night of rest. Very good. I have now been tracking them 2,197 nights and when I started, I was at 4.2 hours of sleep per night. Wow. Because I had this hallucination in my head that like, I, I'll die and that's when I'll finally catch up on all my rest, right. right? Like that was like, literally that was my mindset. I'm now at seven hours and seven minutes, which to me almost seems insane. But when I look at like the statistics and I see like the numbers tracking, like look at this horrible night of sleep. I was in bed seven hours and 50 minutes, but I only, and I'm trying to show you on the camera here, I only really got two deep REM right. sleep cycles, which is why <clears throat> I had a bad night of sleep, yeah. right? If I have a really good night, I'll be like 85, 90% and mm -hmm. I'll get four deep REM sleep cycles. Right. Explain to the people that are listening or watching, what is that and why does it matter? Well, first of all, I would say that the minimum amount of time you have to sleep is going to be seven hours minimum. Yeah. Right, optimal's eight, for some of us it's gonna be nine. And Eamon is now saying eight if you want your brain to do that natural detox wash, which right. happens after seven hours. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. So um, the the there's different levels of sleep, REM sleep, deep sleep. You spend you know probably more time in REM, deep is a, a little bit less often yep. of a, a part of the pattern at night. But there's definitely a certain pattern that yes. happens. And it's during those times that many of the uh, metabolic processes repair themselves, yep. right? You get the brain wash out, you make a human growth hormone. Yep. I think that happens like before 2 a.m. So if yeah. you're going to bed at midnight, yeah. you've missed the window yeah. to even create the right yes. hormones. Um, and just repair, tissue repair, everything that you did, you know, we damage our body all day long, pollution, stress, bad diet. Yep. And then we go to bed and that's when the body fixes itself. Yes. So if we don't have optimized quality of sleep, and there's lots of reasons why people don't get sleep. They don't mm -hmm. allow enough time. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't have the right environment for sleep. It's mm -hmm. gotta be cool. It's gotta be dark. It's gotta be quiet, mm -hmm. which is challenging, you know, in our day. We use our electronics too close to bedtime, right? Should be an hour no electronics an hour before mm -hmm. bed. Uh, so we don't have good, what I call sleep hygiene. Yeah. Or we have a problem, right? The hormones are out yes. of balance. Cortisol is too high. Um, you know, many of the menopausal you, women you I drink work with. You caffeine are, at seven o'clock right. at night or something right. like and that. And alcohol right? is a big, alcohol. right? Alcohol at night really disturbs the sleep. Mm -hmm. um, and there's some really great science data on that. Matthew yeah. Walker's new book, yeah. How We Sleep. So it's, it is, um, it, it's number one. It's yeah. the most critical thing. If you don't sleep, all bets are off. We can't optimize. So a lot of my friends now, we used to brag, like as these you know crazy entrepreneurs, guys and gals, we'd all say like, oh man, I'm getting four hours night of sleep, man. I was like burning the midnight oil. I was up till 2 a.m. Now we all brag about what time we go to bed. Yeah. I was in bed by nine. It was a Friday night. Yes. Yeah. 
I think a big part of it is just changing people's paradigm. Yeah, absolutely. Like, like people just like maybe the lack of awareness of recognizing my body needs to rest so I can heal up so I can go out and attack. Right, exactly. Right? Yeah, I mean, but it used they, to be a badge of honor to, to be able to yes. get by on three or four hours a night. Exactly. We know now that that is ultimately going to be an early death. Yeah. And, and definitely, you know, a, you're not, not going to make the longevity or health span that we talked about. Yes. So sleep is, you know, absolutely sleep is number, one. number one. What's number two? Um, I would say it's not even number two. It's what? like 1.1. One <clears throat> one. Okay, good. Okay. 1A. One 1A. One yes. And um, it, because it's that important, but yeah. but it can't, nothing trumps sleep. So mm -hmm. it's stress response management. Yes. So when I, 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 I recognize, I just haven't come up with a better term for it. When my, I say that to my patients, I get this sort of blank stare like, oh, what the hell is that? Yeah. We all have stress. There's no way to get around it. I don't care. I have people tell me, I don't have any stress. I have all the money I want and great relationships. I'm like, you have stress. You live in this world, you have stress. Yeah. And stress you don't even recognize, like the pollution and EMFs mm -hmm. and whatever, physical stress. Mm -hmm. You have to have a daily plan for how you are going to respond, both emotionally and physically, mm -hmm. to the stress that you are exposed to. And there's very few things that qualify for this. And I kind of think of it as... I put on my suit of armor in yeah. the morning yeah. to protect me from the stress I'm going to have during my day. Mm -hmm. There's really basically maybe three things that fit into that category. Meditation. I was so glad you said that. Yeah. Yes. Meditation is really the key, folks. Meditation, all different forms, mm -hmm. TM, mindfulness, just do one. Get yeah. an app on your phone, do exactly. meditation. Exactly. Biofeedback, which is just a form mm -hmm. of meditation, but I, I kind of think biofeedback tricks the brain a little mm -hmm. bit because when many of us are in a super stressed out mode, very high levels of cortisol, your brain, the primitive brain, thinks that you are in danger because the primitive brain recognizes two modes, death and vacation. Mm -hmm. And since most of us aren't even on vacation when we're on vacation, death is pretty much where we're at. So the brain wants you to be running away from whatever's trying to kill you. Mm -hmm. So when many people sit down to meditate, they're like, oh, I, can't, I can't turn off my brain, I can't do it. Um, biofeedback is still meditation, deep breath, mm -hmm. which is the deep breath is the only signal to the nervous system that you're not going to die. Mm -hmm. Okay. So everything involves deep breath. If you think about it, meditation's deep breathing, biofeedback's deep breathing, but you're usually holding your phone. It's an app. Your eyes are open. So your brain gets a little bit tricked thinking that you're doing something, even though you're actually deep breathing and changing your heart rate variability, which is very important. That's a whole podcast on its own. Um, and then um, yoga. Some forms of yoga, mm -hmm. not stressful forms of yoga, like not power 100, 100, yoga 115 or 115 degree, yoga. degree room, <laughs> but your traditional forms of, of yeah. yoga and, yes. and restorative yoga. So everybody can do yoga, everybody, no matter what your physical yeah. um, abilities are, you can do, there's many different forms that you can take. But, but again, what is the premise of yoga? Deep breath, mm -hmm. deep breath under Quite duress, which is yeah. a pose that you're having a really hard time holding. It's about deep breathing through that. So it's it's all about deep breathing. That's the only thing that qualifies mm -hmm. as a fix to this. Where sleep had several things, yes, this doesn't. Yeah, it's basically that. Yeah, um, there are supplemental things we can do to help calm cortisol. Mm -hmm. But I always tell my patients, you have to start with this first because if you don't do that, it doesn't matter what I give you; isn't going to fix it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. I'm just give me the pills. <laughs> You're like, There's no, no, no. pill. <laughs> no pill to fix it. Relax. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about breathing and doing it as often as you can. But I think starting the day that way mm -hmm. and ending at least the bookends of the day. So you got to at least do that. So Tristan right here, uh, I don't know where we were last week. And and literally uh, RJ and Tristan walk inside my, my hotel suite. And I am I, basically I could have just snapped. I could have just killed someone because I was looking at two weeks of work that I'm behind on, mm -hmm. phone calls, text, all these new disciplines I've taken on, all this stuff, my to-do list. And I and I had to go get fired up and go to a seminar. And I literally, I'm like, we need to do a meditation. <laughs> Tristan's like, yeah, whatever, let's go. And all the, it was like a Calm app, 11-minute mm -hmm. meditation. As soon as it was done, I was like, okay, I got this. Yeah. Like, it is just, it is just remarkable to just stop and have that awareness and say, okay, I'm feeling the stress and tension of this listing I'm about to launch, this deal that's falling apart. My spouse just called me and said, hey, you know, like I feel like we're not connected right now or the kids are missing you or whatever it is and not to react, mm -hmm. but instead to stop, do a little meditation, eight, 10 minutes, something and just create some <clears throat> mindfulness. Yes, right? And that switches the nervous system from death yes. to vacation mode. 
instantly. Yes. Yeah. I was in Minnesota. I don't think in January. It was not vacation mode. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not knocking you, Minnesota. I'm just saying. Yeah, it was an indoor there. deal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what's number, is it two or is it one B? Yeah. Well, I think number, number two yeah. would be exercise. Yes. Now, I haven't gone to diet yet. I know. It's exercise. impressive. Yeah. It's critical. Mm-hmm. It is really critical for longevity and health span. Yes. If you are not doing it, you need to be doing it every day. Every, every day. day. Every day? Some kind of movement on a daily basis. Okay. Now, a few days a week, it should be something more definitely vigorous. much more planned and yeah. more vigorous. Could be mm-hmm. a gym workout, a Peloton ride, whatever. Yeah. But the other days of the week is not on the couch in the bathrobe. It yeah. is moving, whether yeah. it's walking mm-hmm. or doing a little rebounding or a little bit of yoga. And I say, you know, really mix it up. What I do see a lot in my practice is people who are really fixated on cardio only. I do cardio, yeah. cardio, cardio. Yeah. We need strength training. Mm-hmm. We need cardio. We need flexibility. We need balance. So uh, it's it has to be the gamut. One of the easiest. Fit, firm, flexible. Uh, all of I love that. Critical. Yeah. Without yeah, yeah. it. That health span we talked about, and certainly the longevity, mm-hmm. is not an option. I don't care how good you eat. Yeah, you have to move the body, yep. and you pretty much you have to move every day, at least a few days a week. You need to do it more vigorously, for sure. Cool. What's number three? Would be diet. <clears throat> All right. And this is where it gets tricky for a lot of people because there are so many choices. Yes. And what I would what I would say about most of the. F- meal or food or eating plans out there is they all have pieces and parts that make sense, but none of them are a one size fits all approach. Bingo. So with nutrition, it takes a little bit of, um, I think, experimentation. Mm-hmm. And it helps when you're working with someone like me, where you're seeing all the evidence, we know whether or not, say, for instance, you're interested in doing a ketogenic diet. Mm-hmm. We can tell by looking at your labs whether or not that's going to be a beneficial approach for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, or if you're an athlete, we can talk about whether or not that makes sense. But really at the baseline of nutrition, right? If we just got out of Mother Nature's way, folks, yeah. Yeah. all the food was already created. So if you just stick, here's my tenets on diet, stick as close as you can to the natural food process right now you're referring to cycles of like you know spring summer fall winter uh, well i'm I'm talking about first or or there's more green stuff than meat stuff yeah the the food itself right it is is um the the least amount of processing possible right Mm -hmm. so uh you know eating fruits and vegetables Mm -hmm. and in my practice what i tell people is i'm not going to give you a diet i'm going to give you a picture yeah so just Take a plate. It's a round circle. Mm -hmm. Half of it, at minimum, should be vegetables. Half of it. Two handfuls. One quarter of it should be your protein, palm full. I don't care Mm -hmm. where that comes from. Mm -hmm. It could be an animal. Make sure it's clean, Mm -hmm. organic, grass-fed, wild all important. Um, It could be for people who are vegetarian. It could be a grain protein like quinoa, whatever. But a handful, not a plate Mm -hmm. full. Lentils Mm -hmm. or beans, not a plate full. A handful. (laughs) Notice how big you made that plate, too. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, the rest of the plate, which is a pretty tiny little sliver, is I just call it six bites. Yeah. Anything else you think that you might consume at that meal, whether that's mm-hmm. a potato or some rice mm-hmm. or for mm-hmm. your friend Kirk, it was his piece of cake, yes. has to fit in there and not be more than six <laughs> bites. Sorry, Kirk Kessel. Yeah. Um, six bites. <laughs> yeah. So that limits all yeah. of that other stuff, the processed yep. and all of that. So we had mostly vegetables, mm-hmm. a moderate amount of protein, mm-hmm. minimal amounts of anything else you thought you would have, and then ample amounts of good fats in the process of the cooking and the dressing, olive yeah. oil, coconut oil, yeah. nuts, seed, nut butters for your snacks in between, a couple pieces of fruit, max, no juice, no dried fruit, mm-hmm. just fruit. It was made that way because the fiber and the sugar in it when you eat that, mm-hmm. it's a slow process in the body. When you squeeze all the juice out of it, it's just sugar water. Yeah. So uh, that's so so for basic. me, that's the basic approach to nutrition. Once you've got that dialed in and you've got your optimal weight and you're feeling amazing and you want to experiment with something like fasting or ketogenic mm-hmm. or then by all means do it. Yeah. But don't start there. When I made the comment about Joe Rogan, like you know where that came from. It's Jordan Peterson, whose daughter is dealing with some very rare diseases. And the only thing that they discovered through documentation was if she just ate meat, she was able to maintain less pain, greater greater health levels. And then he started doing the same thing. And now all of a sudden Rogan's doing the same thing. But he's experimenting. Right. Clearly. Right. And, and I think that I, I love experimentation. For I'm sure. a total biohacker. Mm-hmm. I am an N of one all the time. However, yeah. I can say that I have a very strong baseline that I started from. If yeah. I didn't create that baseline first, now I'm off biohacking and practicing and experimenting, yeah. it's going to go bad, yeah. really bad. 
So you have to start there. And I think, and for many people, they don't have to go beyond that. That could just be your yeah. diet. Yes. Right. Um, that is a that is really an optimal health baseline. And that diet, by the way, folks, is very similar to like a Mediterranean diet. Exactly. Okay. So yep. lots of veggies, moderate protein, yeah. moderately high good fat, and very little bits of anything else that doesn't fit in those three categories. Yes. Yes. Twinkies aren't on the list. Twinkies aren't on the list. Oh, occasionally, darn right? It. It's darn okay it. to have have <laughs> occasional, Kidding. right? So when I think occasional, I usually give myself, you know, maybe a once a week I can do like some kind of treat yeah. or yeah. but again, I'm really optimized. So yeah. if I did it two or three times a week, I can make it up in everything else that I'm doing. But for those of you out there who are looking to lose weight or you've got a disease process already. Um, these five things are really what you need to be focused on yeah. until you get to a place where you're stable. And then you can play a little bit. Yeah. Right? So what's the, so I got sleep, I got stress uh, response management, which is really deep breathing and yoga and meditation, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? I got exercise, I got diet. What's number four or technically number five? It's, it's, it's a broad category that I'm going to call support. Okay. And it's, it, it is, it's so, so critical. And we really found this in our Level Up program at mm -hmm. Level 10 Health is one of the key components to the success of a lot of people in our program has been the community support. Yeah. Right. And we're seeing that now with all yeah. the social media, yeah. you know, and everybody belongs to a lot of different um, communities. And that support is really critical. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so I think community support is important. I think family support, even if your family members aren't going to join you mm -hmm. in this process, they need to know what you're doing, yes. right? So you craft your plan and you present it and you say, this is what I'm going to do to get healthy. Yeah. They need to at least know, and yeah. hopefully they'll come along for the ride. But they, yeah. lead, I, I have so many patients that don't do that. And then they end up, it ends up becoming an excuse for why they don't, you know, finish the, the plan. Yeah. Uh, but it also can be a roadblock. So I think that support. And then the support of nutritional supplementation. And that can mean many things. And again, yes. that goes back to that evidence, right? Yes. Personalized medicine. What function has already gone awry, has declined? And how do we, aside from those five things, how do we restore function? And a lot of times that needs some kind of a, what mm -hmm. I would think of as a nutraceutical treatment or approach. And I put that in the support category because supplement means to supplement, to yes. support. Yes. Don't start there. Yeah. I see all these people in don't, Whole don't Foods do, or don't others do supplements, their basket, but not you change know. your diet. Right. Still not sleep. It, yeah. it, it is taking the Western medicine mentality yeah. of give me the pill to fix me yeah. over here to functional medicine. Give me the supplement to fix me. I have news for you folks. There isn't one. You have to do the work. Yeah. And then the supplements can exponentially Bingo. increase Bingo. your results. Right. So. All right. So we've spent a lot of time in this discussion and I know a lot of people are probably you know what it is, Pam, it's the same thing that happens every time you have one of our events and you get up on stage and you talk, you know, for five or 10 or 15 like or 30, and then all of a sudden like a hundred people are in line and they come up with the same, you know, it's, it's, Hey, my mom, my dad, my brother, my child, me, Crohn's. The, I mean, it's just, it's the, the range of people that come to you with issues, looking for guidance and advice. Um, so, so I'm going to do something bold. I want you to give out your email address okay. and you're going to get inundated with emails. So are you up for answering some questions for people? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Happy like like that. she was going to say no as we're right in the middle of the yeah. podcast and there is no editing. <laughs> well, I, I hope it was uh, it was apparent to everybody listening yeah. that you know, Where this your heart is, is my passion. Yeah. So, and anybody who stood in that line of 100 people knows that yeah. I will answer your question all day long if that's I, what it takes. Exactly. So I'm happy to do Okay. That. So how do yeah. they reach you? They can reach me at pamjacobson at level10health.com. Pam Jacobson at level10health.com. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's talk about level 10 health for just a moment here. Mm -hmm. So uh, years ago, my lovely wife who's sitting over here, uh, I remember at our two office buildings ago, she calls and says, I have cancer. And I remember canceling everything, going downstairs and just saying, we got this and having really no idea what that meant mm -hmm. other than I love you more than anything else. I'm going to do everything in my power to support you. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Um, I don't remember who it was that either planted the seed, it may have just been her, so I could just probably ask her and you can just let me know. But she said, I know if I'm gonna have to do uh, chemo, I'm gonna need to completely mm -hmm. alter all of my nutrition and, and lifestyle. Everything has got to change to counterbalance the intensity of this. Right. And that was really the origin story of this Level 10 Health Company right. and all these products and all these things that you guys have developed. Right, exactly. Um, so I guess my, baby, what was the origin of that? Was it you? No, I read Joe London's book. Oh, that's right. She read Joan London's yeah, book. That's what she did. I thought that was a pretty good 
Yes. So Joan London uh, had the same exact triple negative cancer, right? Yeah. And Joan London, her, the author of her book is Laura Morton, who's my dear friend who, you know, she, all three of them basically went cancer, 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 one, you know, one back from the other with breast cancer, all healthy now. So that's good. So um, we do a lot of things with Level 10 Health. We do a lot of things to basically help clients get healthier. We create that community. We create that support. Uh, we're just finishing another group right now that just right. came through it from our elite event. We're actually, and then we're starting another group. Right. So if they have questions about that, can they email you that as well? And then you can forward that to whoever on the team. Yes, they can email me cool. any questions cool, cool, cool. that they have. Yeah, the group is ongoing. So, yeah. you know, a person can be in that group. It's a accountability coach. It's the community support. It's all of the things I just talked about in terms yeah. of program resources. We we help you create that baseline and then, you know, help you stick to it. You know, I highly recommend this, people. All right. So, Pam, as we wrap up, um, first of all, thank you so much. I was really stoked that, you know, like to, to do this podcast. And I know my wife is sitting over here probably just out of her mind. Except she's probably <laughs> saying, you didn't ask her this. You could ask her. She could have told you this story and that story. And, you know, but, but I think at, for the person that's listening to this, um, look, it's not a one size fits all deal the thing that I would stress more than anything else is probably the part that you tried to fast forward through or like, oh, I don't want to hear that poop, blood, spit. Yeah. Right. Know what's really going on and then have somebody like yourself who can actually look and say, OK, here's the adjustment you need to make to get back to that optimized state. Because we weren't we weren't born to be in pain. We weren't born uh, to be obese or or to not be healthy. We were born as this like perfect little opportunity and then, you know, to your point, like they load the gun and they fire it the wrong direction every day. Right. Exactly. Right. And, and partly because we just, like I said, we don't, we don't grow up with that understanding. We yeah. know how to do math and read yes. and, but we don't really know how to take care of the, yeah. this amazing vessel that, you know, the whole purpose was to have a great time while we delivered our yes. gifts around the planet. I mean, that's why we're here. Oh my God. I love that. I'm so stealing that. All right. <laughs> so, so what's your email one more time? Pam, Pam Jacob Jacobson at level 10, T-E-N, level 10 health.com. Love it. All right. So thank you so much. And thank you. You might want to send this to a friend or 5,000 and probably a good idea to help the community and the people that you love. So Pam, thanks so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. That's great.